Hey, welcome back. Before we start this volume, here is something really special for you. Una mattina mi son svegliato. Oh, bella ciao, bella ciao, bella ciao, 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 una mattina mi son svegliato e trovato l'invaso. Oh, partigiano, portami via. Oh, bella ciao, bella ciao, bella ciao, 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 partigiano, portami via. Che mi sento di morire una mattina mi sono svegliato e trovato l'invaso. It's nefarious, man. Like the brain works in fucked up ways. The mind is one of the most deceiving, manipulative pieces of equipment, flesh, human bodies on earth. I never have trusted my brain. All of that weight lives in your head. And you are the decision maker. Psychology of entrepreneurship. Hi, it's Ronsley. If this is your first volume, welcome. This is a weekly series where I go inside the mind of an entrepreneur, artist, athlete, academic to decipher what is the psychology of our decisions. I'm Australian and I'd like to acknowledge our traditional custodians of country where I live and work. I pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging and acknowledge our continuous connection and contribution to land, sea and community. It was really good to take a break from publishing. I took a break from all shows, all clubhouse rooms, all social actually for a little bit. It's been a really good kind of change. And I think I'm going to do more of that. But welcome back, you. I hope you've been entrepreneuring, you know, doing the stuff. That opera piece you heard at the start was a gentleman who joined my conversation on Clubhouse. He performed for us all and it was beautiful. Uh, a few people cried. I thought you might want in on that. <laughs> so if you like it, you can actually go and listen to it again by just going back to the start. Um, that's why we put it there. On this show, I'm always after the deeper conversations and with Clubhouse or live audio, I can make that conversation deeper by having deeper discussions. Here is Holly Shannon talking about the platform of live audio. It's such a great platform. Uh, you know, I think what is interesting, I just saw on Twitter today, um, there were some people who were kind of bashing and saying that Clubhouse is boring, you know, being audio only, who cares? Because now Twitter has Twitter spaces, so Clubhouse is dead. Um, and I really thought the whole point was missed <laughs> because I really think that um, Clubhouse has really, by being audio first and audio only, it has tapped into um, something that we were really all craving from being, you know, stuck at home during COVID. And all of the other platforms really only offered us uh, content that we had to write or post in pictures. Um, granted, there was, you know, LinkedIn Live and Instagram Live, but I don't think people were, they weren't using it to have a conversation with each other. They were really just using it to have like one or two people showcased and there'd be a chat underneath it, a written chat that you could answer questions. So I feel like Clubhouse bridged that gap and gave us this really great place to join um, and to be together in a different way. What I'm finding really great for the experience for me is I have a podcast and I hit this inflection point where um, I wanted it to be more than what it was, than just evergreen content that people could access whenever they felt like. I wanted people to have an experience like I was having on Clubhouse. So I've shifted that to recording, um, like how Ronsley's doing here, recording the podcast so that 
it could be live and it could be consumed in a very different manner. Uh, and you could really dive deep with a guest and even incorporate people from, you know, the listeners to join. And then I'm able to push that content out later as the podcast in its original uh, context. So for business, I feel like it adds another element. It taps into a whole group, new, a whole new group of followers. And I'm really enjoying um, using the two experiences together. If you've joined us before on the show, you know Anna Vecino. If you've joined us before on the show and you like the show, please rate and review us. It really helps us get found. It gets more people to listen. And uh, you should also tell a friend about it. But Anna Vecino, she joins our little conversation about how Clubhouse is an exponential relationship quickener (laughs) between podcasters and their audience. This is Anna. What I find Clubhouse is so brilliant at is that you can really reach out and make connections with people. Like long before I monetized, uh, I was on a health and fitness podcast, which I never anticipated because I always worked as a comic. And, you know, frankly, I am comic relief on that. I'm not really the expert of health and fitness, but I am a, a cook and I've turned all of my recipes into low carb recipes and have now written two cookbooks. But the first four and a half years of doing that, there was no monetization for me. I thought like I had to come out with a book in order to make some money. Yes, we had some podcast sponsorships and we made some money that way, but there was no like long lasting residual income. But what I chose to do was make as deep of relationships as I could with my audience members and with people just seeking help. And Clubhouse now is like this exponential relationship quickener because you can just really find your people and then you can leave the other people behind and that's it's all good like you can leave quietly if you're not into it but it's, it's a it's a really nice application for that and so i would say keep deepening and quickening and all, all those those words for solidifying and codifying relationships that you can do with clubhouse until you figure out what it is that you're monetizing and when you're at the beginning of your business clubhouse has previously been exclusively available to ios users but it's now releasing its android app which will be available by the time you're hearing this volume. The app, however, will still remain invite only, at least for now. The company says the reason behind this is part of the effort to keep the growth measured. The social audio platform is now valued at $4 billion and has acknowledged that it's grown much faster than expected. The growth explosion slowed things down on the technical side, but led to the company focusing on things like hiring and company building. You know, inviting some of my famous friends to these discussions is really fun. This is a dear friend, James Tuckerman. He spoke and helped me promote We Are Podcast 2015. I'll never forget that. I didn't have any track record of running any sort of events at the time, leave alone the first podcasting conference in Australia. I'm just grateful to have had that kind of support. And if you, as an entrepreneur, think that you're self-made, I'd ask you to reconsider that uh, thought because no one, actually no one, is self-made. Well, anyway, enough of my rant. This is James. He's explaining that sharing information is a new way of doing business. It always has been for the last few years with the information age. And that we need to know who our target audience is to best engage with them. It's, uh, why is your favorite celebrity chef rich and famous? And even if you don't have a, celebra- a favorite celebrity chef, you'll know one, which means by default you have, have a favorite. Why is your favorite celebrity chef rich and famous? The answer is because they give away their recipes 24-7, seven days a week. And then what do we do? We buy their cookbooks, their branded saucepans. We go to their restaurants. If we've got a ton of cash, we hire them to, to cater for us. Whereas the old way of doing business is was a saying from like the 1980s, I think. And it's the margin is in the mystery. I, if I don't tell you how I do what I do, I can charge you more. Wahaha. But now these days, every single mystery is available in a five minute YouTube clip. Here we are with Clubhouse and it's a brand new forum. What you're able to do is you're able to share and test some of these recipes. You're able to say, hey, what do you think of my cookies? And what do you think of my lasagna? And, uh, and get feedback. You can refine your skills and you can also, as, uh, as Anna said, get to know a whole lot of people really, really quickly. Because here's the other thing, you can't, you can't really fake it on this platform. You either know what you're talking about or, 
or you don't. Whereas on other platforms, you can get away with that. I want to give you two specific pieces of advice and they're not necessarily Clubhouse related, but I think that you'll find uh, them useful. So number one is, uh, and I think this came up already in a roundabout way, but knowing who your target audience is. So if you know who your target audience is and you know that they are on Clubhouse, that's a really good beginning. Because I do know people that are jumping all over Clubhouse and their target audience are not on it. Uh, A closer example in my world is when someone's in the B2B space and they race off and start a a Pinterest or an an Instagram channel. Uh, Whereas, I don't know, two to three years ago, that would be a good waste of time. They'd be better off focusing on LinkedIn and then Facebook. So it's one, is your audience here? Is your crowd here? Is it a starving crowd? And because you're working with people who probably have wisdom, who have expertise, they have knowledge, and they also need to acquire it from other people as well too. So they want to have a voice and they want to collect a voice. Uh, That's bigger picture. The other bit is a little bit more transactional. And um, we have another saying, and it's don't launch to crickets. And what that simply means is right from the outset, start to build your audience, get your voice out there. But don't just stop with, hey, this is me and this is my opinion and I've got views to share. Have a think about ways that you can bring people into your database as early as possible. Because the reality is, is when we start a business, everyone who's ever started a business and all the other panelists will agree, we don't have a clue what it is that we're doing. And we also don't have a keen sense or understanding of what our target audiences really, really want. So if we can get onto Clubhouse, start having conversations, seeing what's resonating, if you can start collecting a little bit of data, first name, last name, email address, maybe, and bring those people into your world, well, you can start to test ideas. And when I say don't launch to crickets, that's the opposite of what a lot of people do. They come up with a business name, they, come, they spend thousands of dollars on a website, they pull together their product set or their service suite, and then they launch to crickets. And they discover at that point that nobody wants it. Whereas if you can start beginning by testing ideas, but also collecting that data, that means that when you are ready to launch, you can discover either whether you're on the right path really quickly, or you can immediately discover that you're on the wrong path, and then you can pivot really quickly. Whereas most people spend all that money, all that time building it, then they launch, but they don't have the critical mass to know whether they're on the right path or not. So it might take six months or 12 months to even figure out that they've got it all wrong. Whereas if you can build the database, they'll tell you fast. with this audio documentary has always been to build a strong community of entrepreneurs and creatives to provide a space where they can use their voice to share their authenticity with the world. As a valued listener, your voice matters too. We love to hear your feedback and ideas. So don't be shy to let us know how we're doing in the ratings and comments. If you have a message for our production team or know someone who would be a perfect fit as a guest, You can find out more information on how to share your input at psychologyofentrepreneurship.com. We had a bunch of amazing humans that joined the conversation who moderate a lot of rooms on Clubhouse. We start with a confidence coach talking about the importance of figuring out how the platform works and making connections with others by just making yourself accessible. She talks about the expected Clubhouse culture of having conversations outside the app, how having clear call to actions is extremely vital for this connection flow, and that we need to be prepared to respond to the DMs that inevitably we will get if we are on Clubhouse. I think for me, one of the things that I first started doing is figuring out the platform and learning how to use it because it's so amazing, but it's also, there's so much going on. And so as a business owner, as a mother of two, as a happily married woman, I really noticed quickly that this could take a lot of time and energy from an already busy life. So I started jumping into rooms and listening to amazing people like Brendan and Kat, who I connected with as, as soon as I got on Clubhouse. And then just adding in whenever I could or asking questions. 
It's about getting into rooms that are already there. It's about connecting with people and adding value where you can or asking really great questions. And when people hear you, they feel seen and heard if they're your people. When people go, damn, I love what he had to say. I love that Anna's a chef. Okay, James, I like your accent. Let me connect with you, Rob. You know, like you hit people up and you start connecting and sharing with them by hearing them on stages. And then as you take your audiences from other places, for me, Instagram is really big and I love my community there. So I'm talking to them about Clubhouse and I'm letting them know I'm in rooms uh, and then creating rooms that I know that people are interested in with other amazing moderators. And the beautiful thing about Clubhouse is that it's not about me, it's we. You know, it's passing the mic, it's sharing the platform with other incredible, you know, I'm a confidence coach. There are millions of amazing women that are confidence coaches that I get to share platform with and we create a community. And the people who are for me will come to my Instagram and hit me up. And I think it's, it's getting on the mic, it's sharing, it's listening, and it's connecting. And then if people like you, you don't have to sell shit. Like if people are like, wow, I love your vibe, I love your style, they're going to check your bio. They're going to hit you on Instagram or Twitter, wherever you're connected. And when they're there, you know, make sure you say DMs are open. Let's talk, let's connect. And you'll build an incredible community. So for me, I've been I've been selling books, selling virtual tickets to business events that I'm running without selling a thing, just by being me and speaking and swearing and going, bah, 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 because that's my horn sound and I love making it. <laughs> I will add on to that when it comes to maintaining those connections, particularly outside of the platform, where first of all, you have to make those connections. One of the awesome things about Clubhouse is that it is expected, it is just the culture here, that you have conversations outside of the app. And that is for the biggest reason, because there's no messaging function on this app. And so Instagram is where people typically go. Now, one of the things I'll say that people tend to forget is that if you want to have those conversations outside of Instagram, you need to put in your bio a call to action. You need to actually tell people that they can DM you and give them that instruction. So I would definitely add to your bio at the bottom, DM me, and then tell people what you want them to DM you about. Like for me, I'm like, to be honest, people don't really listen. I say DM me for femininity coaching. Everyone just DMs me, (laughs) but at least they know specifically uh, one of the things they can DM me about. The next thing is, um, you once you put that in your bio, what you'll see is people will reach out to you. In fact, get ready. Get ready for your DMs to blow up if you go up on stages and you speak and you give value to the point that a common, uh, one of the things that Clubhouse has done is really given jobs in this economy for VAs to handle people's DMs. That's how much, how many DMs you'd likely get. And, um, but you also, the other thing is you can't just wait as well for people to DM you. You have to act, take action. Now, there's one thing I realized when I started getting a lot of DMs. Um, oh, I didn't explain. I'm a femininity expert. I also I moderate a lot of rooms and, um, I have Clubhouse on the cover, which is all about how to value hack Clubhouse. And then I have my femininity coaching work as well. So I'm doing like multiple things on the platform. So when I started getting lots of DMs, what I started to ask myself is what makes me respond and make a priority for one DM over another? And what it was, I'll break it down into three steps. So number one, they would, person who's messaging, you should anchor yourself in their world, which is to say someone like Brendan and and like Erica, and I'm sure all the other mods, Holly, everyone else on the stage goes in multiple rooms a day. So if you just say, hey, saw you on Clubhouse, great to connect, that it just exists in the ether for me. So when you're able to ground it in, I was in the business owner's guide to Clubhouse room with Ronsley. Aha, now I know exactly where we, and someone literally just DM me now, (laughs) and um, where that that area of uh, probably uh, alignment is. The second thing is, People tend to give uh, things like let's connect or let's stay connected. Well, if you're DM me, we're already connected. <laughs> so what does that actually mean? You have to give a clearer, strong caller, a clearer call to action, which is to say specifically how you want to connect. It's so much easier if you say, hey, I would, I would love if you popped in my room for five minutes or I'd love to collaborate with you on this or I'd love to get your thoughts on this or um, I'd love to have a, a set up a Zoom call with you than if you say, would love to connect some more. Connect some more is so ambiguous. And if you're, some, if you're dealing with someone who's in high demand, they are, nor should they have to do the work to figure out how they can help you. You need to tell them how you want that connection to happen. So that's the second thing. And the third thing 
I will add is often when you're approaching, particularly for collaborations or you're asking someone to get involved in what you're doing, people tend to forget that they know who they are, but this person might not know who you are. So you can make it it 10 times easier, especially if you want to collaborate on Clubhouse by telling them your areas of interest, right? If you're approaching someone and you're like, would love to connect and maybe uh, do a room with you. If you just say, let's do a room, okay, now what? Does that person have to go do the work and go research you and do all of this detailed background stuff in order for them to find out what your interests are? Wouldn't it just be easier if you say, I love to host rooms on X, Y, and Z? Because when you say that, that person is very quickly able to say, aha, yeah, we would so be in alignment because I love to do rooms on personal development or I'm actually so interested in music or the opposite which is sometimes happens, actually, I'm not interested in any of these things. And you can say, we'll put this on the back burner and save yourself 20 different messages before you actually found out that you weren't the right fit. So those are the three things. And the, I'll give you a little bonus that I started to realize recently. Because so many people on this app who are giving value are getting a lot of DMs, not everyone sees every DM. Or sometimes we see a DM and we forget to respond. So sending a follow-up message is just like, I know a lot of people get afraid. I don't want to bug this person. But actually, we're over here like, please send a follow-up message. Because every single time someone goes in a room, they're going to get like anywhere from like 5 to 15 messages. So your message is going all the way down that DM list. So if you don't send a follow-up, it's very easy for you to disappear into the ether. And it just happened to me today where someone sent me a follow-up and they're like, Kat, I'm so sorry for messaging you again. But I'm like, no, I actually wanted to help you. So I'm so appreciative that you messaged me again because I would not have seen that message. So don't be afraid of the follow-up. Anchor yourself in their world. Give them a specific call to action and then let them know who you are. And those would be my, my four key points for connecting on Clubhouse. This part coming up is so powerful. This is Dr. Sonia Stribling. She is a weapon. Google her name. Uh, But the links to her website will be in the show notes. She talks about the reasons why people start rooms on Clubhouse, how we need to work on our strategies for interacting with the audience, and that we need to determine what we want to do with that outcome. She says we need to understand how interacting on the platform feels like to our listeners and to do our best to provide a safe and comfortable space for them to participate. This is Dr. Sonia. And so a couple of things you can do as you're building this room. And I want to just kind of lay this out for those in the audience as well. The reason why I believe that less people build their rooms on Clubhouse is for a couple of reasons. One, we've built our platforms, and I said not we, but most people have built their platforms off of Clubhouse. So when they come to Clubhouse, maybe people don't know them. But I'm going to challenge you just a little bit in this scheme of things and then give you some other things you can do off of Clubhouse to bring even more people here and on that of the other platforms. Number one, if you go ahead, and this is for everyone, if you go ahead and just start your room now, a couple of things are going to happen. It gives you the opportunity to practice long before you get 50, 60, 100, 300, 1,000 people in your room. Take advantage of it now because some people are not really good at, this is more like radio conversation, more of heart to heart. Here, you don't get to hide. Before, you can have this gorgeous image up and you can do all that. But here, it comes down to the heart. Are you serious about helping other people? That's number one. The second thing that it will give you the opportunity if you just go ahead and get started versus, okay, can someone give me a tip? How do I do this best? I'm just going to say, jump out there. I'm definitely that person. Jump off the building, grab your parachute as you're on your way down. Too many people are at the top trying to figure out this strategy and they're getting left behind. So which takes you to number two is work on your strategy as people begin to come in. And the only reason why people are not doing this, Fern, is simply because it's an ego thing. Oh my gosh, what if nobody comes in? I'll be embarrassed. What if one person comes in? But what if that one parent comes in who needs to hear what you have to say and you change their life forever? If you start to focus on 
let me save one at a time before I go save the many. It'll give you that confidence. It'll let you know I'm in the right place at the right time. I'm on board with this. And I don't care if five people come in or 50 people come in. I came here to save other parents. So that's number two. And the third thing, determine what you want to do when you're done. Like there should be an offer, a CTA, a call to action for them to do, which takes me to the third part, or excuse me, to the the part I really want to get into. As we're coaches, I've considered myself, I just wanted to serve other women building their coaching businesses. It gave me the opportunity to show them what I've done to get to almost a million dollar a month coaching business, but I don't do it because just for the money. Yeah, does it give me the opportunity to do some things that I love to do, but this is what it's given me the opportunity to do. Be about what I talk about right? I don't want to be out here teaching people. Let's say I'm you, Fern, and I'm teaching about parenting. What conversation can I have with them, which you can take them to, let's say you start a Facebook group, the art of parenting. Let's just give it something simple. Of course, it'll be a little bit more sexier than that. But say you have a Facebook group where you send people over there where you can start giving them downloads and getting an opportunity to have conversations with them as you invite them from Clubhouse or from your Facebook group over to Clubhouse. And so let's say you start with a topic in Clubhouse, last part, and I'll close it out. The top five things most parents should know about whatever it is that you want them to know. And if you get started in this, let's pretend that you sat down and came up with a five-part strategy. Part one is just to get your feet wet. What do you want the parents to know? Maybe you have 25, 50 things in the first time you're in Clubhouse, you just do the top five. And they say, hey, if you guys want the recording of this, go over to my Facebook group. I did a live download or whatever it is that you want to do. So I just wanted to drop that on there. I am a practical person. I'm also the person who loves to give people tips so they can go and take action now. And for everyone listening, please don't wait. Don't sit and kind of come up with this 10-day strategy and you're going to and you're going to implement in 45 days. Go ahead and do it now before they open it up to the rest because those who do it now and get started, you will see your business triple. Hey, I just wanted to chime in with like a real quick first of all Dr. Sonia, that was amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All of us, I know that we're all going, okay, I'm running it through that filter like am I am I working this right? Am I doing this right? So thank you for that. And uh, I just I heard somebody say something in a room moderating that I thought was so wonderful because Fern, you're talking about putting people at ease. And I was jumping in as a listener because I've launched a food company and I don't know, I, I, I sell direct to consumer and I don't know anything yet about selling into grocery stores and I have a million questions, right? So I am in these groups with these heavy hitters and I can't believe that I have access to all this information. And it really, it flips the tables when you are not the one who's the expert. So I, I'm in there. I'm scared to ask. I'm actually nervous to ask questions. And something the moderator said was, raise your hand, ask questions, even if it's already been asked or you think it's already been asked. And for whatever reason, that just put everybody at ease to feel like they could raise their hand and talk. So just whatever you can do to make your people more comfortable to participate in the conversation, I just want to throw that out there a little tidbit. Psychology. Coming up on The Psychology of Entrepreneurship. Uh, as a parent, like I look at my three girls, and I'm like, I never want to say no. And so one is actually like reframing the wording. So instead of saying no running, saying uh, use your walking feet. Because I'm so apt to say hell yes to almost everything, there have been some times where I realized I didn't even realize that I was allowing boundaries to be trod upon. So uh, there have been times where I've had to speak up and 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 establish some boundaries. One thing I realized over the years was that by saying no to myself, not others, I drained my own energy, you know? Psychology of entrepreneurship. That conversation has been a little slice of heaven. So we're going to do more of those. And if you're interested to hear them live and join us live, and we would love to hear your voice in whatever capacity it allows us to, please follow the Psychology of Entrepreneurship Club on Clubhouse and also follow me at Ronsley. It would be amazing to get you on and get your perspective on different things. In the meantime, go have fun. This is a Must Amplify production. Special thanks to every guest expert that has appeared on the show. 
editing, voiceovers, and sound design by Kaylee Bonnyman and Tiago Vega, guest research by Jenna Elliott, content by Curran Castles, project managed by the legend that is Kaylee Bonnyman, produced and hosted by me, Ron Slivas. For more episodes and way to listen, go to mustamplify.com slash P-O-E. Love the polished audio docu-series style of this podcast, The Psychology of Entrepreneurship? At We Are Podcast, you can learn how to create a similar style for your own show. This revolutionary virtual event assembles podcasters, entrepreneurs, and marketers in one spot, so you're able to learn from the masters. Head straight to wearepodcast.com to reserve your spot at our next event.